Okay. Um, I'll, I'll show you after. People can bang on this little app if they want to. Ooh. And um, source code. It's basically just a minimum viable Noster client, and I'll get into what that is. It was a zchat.vercel.app. Zchat All right, solving social on Bitcoin, demo code. Not like this, um, DSO, VC coin, decentralized social blockchain, a new layer one blockchain built from the ground up to scale decentralized social applications to one billion users. Why? Because existing blockchains can't scale social apps. Social applications generate a lot of data and existing blockchains are not equipped to store and index it. You know, one of many shitcoin-driven VC sort of hype ex, you know, big Andreessen Horowitz investor taking their crack at, you know, thinking that new layer ones are going to solve specific use cases. Um, I think this is a faulty premise. You don't need to store data in order to have decentralized social. Um, and we've got, you know, examples of people in the Bitcoin ecosystem that have other takes on what you can do with social. Sphinx being a great example. They use Lightning. They're not storing messages on Lightning or on Bitcoin. They're storing messages on these relay nodes, which are just wrappers on top of LND, and using Lightning Network for message transport, payments, you know, taking advantage of the end-to-end -end encryption, coming down to the Bitcoin layer for security, but doing a lot more with just these Node.js servers. Uh, and in their model, everyone has one uh, node. Now, you can argue about the potential scalability of this contrasted with other potential architectures, um, but this is at least working. Uh, but as I've surveyed the kind of space of who's doing what in social, I'm identifying three rough types of architectures. The first two are the ones, and if anyone can add to this, I'd love if there's something else, but broadly, um, the first two are implemented, the third ones are st is still kind of in demo mode. So in the Sphinx model, every user has their own lightning node, um, you know, the quote unquote relay nodes that wrap L and D, and they got support for you know green light and umbral and just different ways of people running their own nodes and plugging in and with you know offer a, a business service hosting it, that in the cloud. Um, on the entirely opposite side, you've got Fountain, which is a beautiful podcasting app, uh, entirely so far as I can tell centralized. They use LN Pay authentication is via Firebase. It's essentially just a centralized app that uses Lightning for payments but you know, is a great example of what you can do with micropayments applied to a social use case. Um, these two projects, Noster from Fiat Jaff, slash tags recently announced from John Carvalho, um, they both have, from what I can tell, a really similar um, architecture. It's basically keys plus metadata. Um, and it's, it's telling, I think, that you know, both of those guys who are really strong Bitcoin and Lightning developers you know, have their, their take on this has no dependency on Lightning or even Bitcoin. Uh, there's the flexibility to add that if you want, but the authentication is simply via a pub prive key, um, Schnorr or Bitcoin key, the, although you could use others, and then relays that store data. <coughs> uh, just to drill down, the slash tags is still a little bit kind of information. They've got a little bit of an MVP. Noster is at least, you know, clear about what the, the, the architecture is. So in, in Noster, for example, Everyone runs a client. It can be native client, web client, mobile, whatever. To publish something, you write a post, sign it with your key, and send it to multiple relays, servers hosted by someone else or yourself. To get updates from other people, you ask multiple relays if they know anything about these other people. Anyone can want to run a relay. A relay is very simple and dumb. It does nothing besides accepting posts from some people and forwarding to others. Relays don't have to be trusted. Signatures are verified on the client side. The uh, sort of synonym model from what I can tell listening to John's podcast, it's basically this model um, added onto it. They have um, in the synonym model, the nodes are talking to each other using Hypercore, kind of, uh, I don't know, less Ethereum version of IPFS, letting nodes kind of communicate and doing interesting things with data persistence. Um, but aside from that, the models are, are pretty similar. Um, just to kind of tie this back to, um, there's this article Breeze put out a while back on uh, Lightning and the Internet and kind of saying, like, look, as an ecosystem, we can do one of two things. We can have Lightning be a payment network 
and you know hook it into all these other aspects of digital life and then you've got you know they're, they're kind of criticizing people the lightning expansionists as they say who want to import the internet onto lightning because it's too valuable to be just a payment network idea here, here is to refound the entire internet as a decentralized peer-to-peer all-purpose data network that handles messaging streaming video and audio data files and the whole freaking internet becomes lightning tap trap and go to this cool blog post i don't know if i 100 percent agree with it but just around why this thinking kind of skews the incentives that would harm the the main use case they argue of lightning so if you were to say that um i would think that that would also kind of push you more towards the Noster and Synonym uh, architecture, even though I think this is mainly a criticism of impervious, and maybe you could argue that that you know, can apply to some extent to Sphinx. And just one more like piece of shade from John saying, you know, I think a proper way to do encrypted chat is to build on something like slash tags and not on the Lightning Network. I'm sorry, Sphinx chat and things like this. I just don't think that's appropriate. It's not a scalable use. It's kind of like a hack and a novelty to do this on Lightning. Um, so I just want to draw this distinction between using Lightning versus running on Lightning. And, you know, similarly, using Bitcoin and the patterns of Bitcoin versus running on Bitcoin. Um, I think there's an argument to be made that if you're trying to build like a social application in which we want to be able to say a week, two weeks, a month from now, if there's mass exoduses of people from Twitter looking for, al- for alternatives, from Facebook looking for alternatives, you know, it would be nice to not have the bottleneck of supporting all those users be you know, really interesting arcane issues around lightning channel liquidity because we're forcing everyone to have a lightning node. So I think that kind of being able to support more of a mainstream use, user base is an argument for exploring some of these other models that are a little bit more lightweight, don't have all these hard dependencies on Bitcoin and lightning, but can still kind of borrow from the, um, you know, the, the, the patterns. I got one last slide, but I want to just first pop over to here and um, hopefully this works. So I'm going to, you can test this in two browsers, Zchat, dot sell that app I'll pop over to here and so this is just minimum viable Nostra client just to demonstrate um, when you click create it'll just spit you out a, um, a schnorr public private key and you begin by um, we're, we're connecting to a Nostra relay that I tested you know a few months ago which is some demo keys that I'm listening to so in the beginning you're only listening to those public keys and yourself so if I write a post here It'll put it there, and it doesn't show up over there, but if I copy the pub key from here, and I follow it from over here, and then I do that again, it'll pop up over there. So just really basic, this is just a, there, it's WebSocket connection to a relay, and kind of the, the benefit to this is that people then can have the choice to run relays and potentially add other things on top of them. Uh, there was an idea from the um, PlebFi, I can't remember who gave the um, talk, but there was a talk at the PlebFi about using um, the idea of like fee marketplaces in the realm of Lightning to you know, build this distributed network that kind of borrows from certain of the architecture of Bitcoin, but as applied to for th- things like channel liquidity, you could apply that same thing toward uh, you know, VPN services or file hosting. Um, where you've got these, this distributed network of nodes that are talking to each other, um, you know, maybe that's via P2P gossip, and then they're using some sort of like auctioning system to make payments uh, and negotiate over Lightning. Okay, you know, you want me to store this message for you? That'll cost 10 sats. There's all sorts of cool use cases around just you know applying that idea to various things. I thought, okay, well, what would applying that concept to messaging in the context of this potential, um, you know? Noster specification look like. Um, one thing I like about Noster is that it's written as a specification, and in their GitHub repo, they show a number of people that have you know put in various clients and servers, writing things in different languages. It, it, not a very like active project. They got a somewhat active Telegram channel. But a, as one example, like you know, in this case, you know, I'm the React web client. I'm talking to a relay um, that I you know wrote some messages to a long time ago. But let's say you know you know, John's company or someone using that kind of model, they want to have relays that also speak Noster, but then have their own, uh, you know, they use this hypercore for, for kind of interesting data replication between these. So maybe this, because John's architecture, for example, is using hypercore, whereas others don't, that then may enable them to add a service. So these different things that could be charged for. So 
you know, if you want to send a message and you don't want it to be reliant on just one relay that can go down, you're willing to pay an extra five sats or whatever to have it replicated among number relays or persistence across geographic zones or, you know, there could be people who specialize in getting, you know, data hosted for people in China or breaking through firewalls and stuff and making that available to other people. Um, and then the, the point I want, uh, and then, you know, there could be relays. These are just basically um, not just a specification. There's like reference implementations of like JavaScript nodes doing this. So it's, it's really easy, Node.js, for example, to run maybe one of these relays runs LND Hub and they've got a sort of account system on there. You know, if someone wanted to plug Impervious into this, there's no reason you couldn't run a relay in Impervious and kind of talk to this. But I like the idea of Noster, and there could be something else, but just some way for sort of Bitcoin or Bitcoin adjacent projects to be talking with each other. And I'll, I'll leave you with one example. The, um, uh, in the Noster channel a few months ago, uh, the LN Bits guy, Ben, kind of was talking about doing Bitcoin Uber, and he wanted to do an LN Bits extension for, um, you know, doing kind of peer to peer rides. And I was like, you know, that's really cool, and I want to like support that because that's a use case that I've been involved in. And so we just did this little like, uh, you know, doohickey showing consuming messages from our app from you know his sort of reference client. And so if there's some one of the things here we got to start talking about the different um, potential metadata that could go in towards what would it look like to have a ride request data piece be able to be recognizable by multiple clients. So and I just want to say as someone who spent years in the Ethereum space since 2016 running like decentralized ride share as the use case, like in the bit in the Ethereum space, 20 plus decentralized ride share projects cropped up, didn't reach out to us at all. And yet I get into a Telegram channel and like in th like three days, we've got some actual like actual work toward interoperability. So I think this emphasis, I think on kind of specifications that can unite people to work together and solve a use case called Bitcoin based social for everyone. Um, I think the emphasis on protocols above like uniquely siloed apps with their own particular architecture, they want everyone to do that. Um, I think the emphasizing the interop is, is important and how we will, you know, outperform the, the shit coiners. Questions, comments, feedback, insults, please. An insult, Chris. Yeah. No, like you mentioned earlier that this was that Master compared to IPFS, like you said something about Ethereum and IPFS, but like like we were kind of doing a similar thing with IPNS, like like I was rolling a Reddit thing in a weekend. Uh, similar kind of concept where like you have a public key in the node that you subscribe to and you just like you just tell people what your new hashes are. Like what's what was the what are you getting out of Nostra that yeah, IPFS is broken. <laughs> okay, I, I can't I can't relay the exact arguments. I just say like Fiat Jaff, who is the guy behind Noster and a few other like LN URL, LN Tipbot, various lightning stuff. He's just got amazing content on his blog about IPFS and it just makes different points about how the architecture is really buddy buddy with the Ethereum space and it's got a lot of like kind of skewed incentives. I can't relay it, um, but. Yeah, Hi Hypercore is its own kind of separate um, interesting project that the, um, I know that they're working closely with the, um, that's not it, with the um, synonym team. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not able to like relay much more technical detail than that, but can anyone, does anyone have any quick like Thoughts on yeah. Is, that, is this missing or, anything? Even then, you could even like combine like just like rehost on IPFS and Hypercore, right? And the Absolutely. Same model could, of, like yeah. using Nostra and sending them per this kind of stuff. You can yeah. It, th th there there may be people who who just run like a, a ramp to IPFS and then they just charge for that as a service. I'm thinking like like there might be some people in say for example the Rweave ecosystem that from what I can tell have done a pretty good job of figuring out an incentive mechanism around sort of permanent or 200 year like storage guarantees. Like that might be someone, if I can pay for that service in Lightning SAPs and just set that as a flag on messages that I want that level of persistence, it just exposing everything like that to market forces and using you know, Lightning SATs as kind of the negotiating currency. Thanks guys.